Thank you for joining this OncoLive peer exchange on mantle cell lymphoma. Mantle cell lymphoma is a clinically heterogeneous disease that develops in a diverse patient population, highlighting a need for more personalized treatment approaches. In this OncoLive peer exchange, I'm joined by a panel of experts in lymphoma research. During the discussion, my colleagues and I will explore the benefits and risks of intensive and de-intensified treatment approaches, the success of novel agents in the relapsed and refractory setting, and their potential use in frontline combinations. In addition, we will highlight studies from the 2017 ASH annual meeting and explain how the new data will impact your clinical practice. I am Dr. John Leonard, the Richard Silver Distinguished Professor of Hematology and Medical Oncology and Professor of Medicine at New York Presbyterian Hospital and Weill Cornell Medicine. Joining me for this discussion is Dr. Alexi Daniloff, Associate Professor of Medicine at the Knight Cancer Institute of Oregon Health and Science University in Portland, Oregon. Dr. Andre Gua, Chairman and Executive Director at the John Thurer Cancer Center. To Lydia Pfum, Chair for Lymphoma at Hackensack University Medical Center in New Jersey. Also Dr. John Pagel, Chief of Hematologic Malignancies and Director of Stem Cell Transplantation for the Center of Blood Disorders and Stem Cell Transplantation at Swedish Medical Center in Seattle, Washington. And finally, Dr. Stephen Schuster, Professor of Medicine, Director of the Lymphoma Program and Director of Lymphoma Translational Research at the Abramson Cancer Center at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. Thank you all for joining us today and uh, let's go ahead and, get, and begin. So first, I think we want to give the audience a little bit about uh, the background of mantle cell lymphoma, the disease itself. And I think we would all agree that uh, mantle cell is a very heterogeneous disease with disease that can be quite aggressive, disease that can be indolent, and a lot in between. So I'll start with Andre. What, um, how do you approach or what is your take on, first of all, the classification of mantle cell lymphoma that the audience needs to know about as they see patients? What are the genetic variants or the clinical variants that we see? And kind of the subtyping that at least perhaps relates to prognosis and perhaps also therapy. Your thoughts? That's an important question. As, we, as you say, we have a growing awareness of the biological complexity and the originality of a mental cell lymphoma. And how does it translate into the clinic? So by definition, mental cell lymphoma has an overexpression of cyclin D1 due to a rearrangement of the 1114 translocation. That is, um, very, that is critical for the diagnosis in mental cell lymphoma. Some rare variant, though, cannot, can be cyclin D1 negative, really rare, but um, showing the importance of the cell cycle disruption, they actually overexpress cyclin D2 or the cyclin D3 and actually have rearrangement typically with a light chain. How can we go beyond that? We often, when you do cytogenetics on patients with mental cell lymphoma, we can see some patients who have complex karyotype because there's an inherent genetic instability, particularly in patients who have 11Q deletion, and that um, can present at presentation or get worse over time with more complex abnormalities. And in the practice, um, what matters is um, the proliferation signature uh, surrogate marker that we use called KXC7. So by gene expression profile, in large cell lymphoma, we found different subtype of lymphoma. In male cell, what we find is sort of a proliferation signatures from the slow proliferation to the higher proliferation. So we try to duplicate this using a cutoff of 30% of a KXC7 um, um, by immunohistochemistry. Some of the um, more, maybe more recently noticed is actually SOX11. So SOX11 is typically expressed in, in um, mental cell lymphoma and in the more aggressive subtype, and some subtype have SOX11 negative and have a more indolent course. And some of these patients with this more indolent course present, I'm sure we'll discuss more about this subtype during this session, present with um, CLL features in a way with a high white count, the splenomegaly, and um, few or any lymphadenopathy. And these patients are somatically mutated, they, have, they don't have complex karyotype, and they're SOX11 negative, and they have a much more indolent course, and probably should be managed very differently. And then finally, I think one important aspect of um, molecular subtype is PVT3. PVT2 deletion 17P at baseline is not very common 
can happen, but when you look at uh, bioimmunosochemistry or bio mutation profile, there were several presentations that are confirming this. We had uh, up to 23, 25% of patients that can present at baseline having uh, PVD3 abnormalities, and this patient, obviously, even with a the hydrotherapy and do poorly, we'll talk about this in more detail. I, I think this is this heterogeneity at the molecular level is reflected by what we already know from mental cell lymphoma, because when we describe the morphology of mental cell lymphoma, we talk of the um, um, pleomorphic, we talk of the blastoid variant, we talk of the nodular and diffuse, and all of this that represent actually in reality sort of a spectrum disease. So again, the uh, indolent subtype and then the rest of it that have a proliferation signature that varies among patients and clearly affects the prognosis.